Hey Chris, I'm gonna try to give you a little walk through here on the uh, GoPro connected to the uh, Safari board and with the uh, MOSFET backpacker that will operate your lighting array. <coughs> and uh, the Safari board is running off of uh, three AA batteries here, which I'll include that holder for you. And the uh, power leads from the battery holder will connect to the Safari board. Here at this uh, right side terminal, you'll see ground and power screw terminals. That's where your battery holder will connect to. And then the two terminals next to that, I'll have a uh, on and off toggle switch that will be pre-connected to that. Uh, the GoPro, like I'd uh, talked with you on the phone, I soldered the uh, negative wire and a power wire to this bus terminal on the back and I've got those gooped in place so it makes them you know harder to get pulled loose there and those wires connect at the screw terminal here the left screw terminal the uh, red power wire from that bus connector will connect to the uh, power port and then to the left will be the power common which would be that black wire from that bus port and that's all the connections we need for the GoPro. <clears throat> Up top, you got your MOSFET backpacker. And this board simply just uh, plugs in on the Safari board with these uh, header pins. You'll see a 6-pin header and an 8-pin header, and those just align and push in. Uh, but for your lighting array, uh, up top, the screw terminal on here, You'll see the one to the far right is marked F1, and that would be your uh, negative wire from your lighting array would connect there. And then the screw terminal to the left of that would be F1C, and that would be where your negative uh, lead from your 12 volt power supply would connect. If you're running two lighting arrays, you'll see two other screw terminals to the left, uh, one marked F2 and that would be for your second lighting array negative wire and then F2C would be for your uh, negative power supply from your 12 volt battery. Uh, if you're going to run both lighting arrays from the same 12 volt battery you actually uh, wouldn't need to connect anything to t F2C over here because on the bottom of the board uh, there's a bridge connection it's actually a trace that connects F1C and F2C but if you're going to be running a separate uh, 12 volt battery for the extra lighting array you could connect that uh, 12 volt negative to F2C alright and then for your positive wires uh, positive wire from your lighting array and your positive wire from your 12 volt battery supply those would connect together and just take those off or heat shrink them together because those do not connect to the uh, Safari board or the MOSFET backpacker. Okay, so just plug this uh, MOSFET backpacker into the header pins on the Safari board and just push those together and that's all you need to do there. Alright, <clears throat> so I'm going to run through the operation um, on how the uh, programming is set up and you just power on your toggle switch and you'll notice that I have in the programming when this is powered up the lighting array is going to come on and let me show you that it'll come on for uh, about 10 or 12 seconds just to uh, kind of verify that that LED array is going to function and now we're going into the walk test mode the walk test will continue for 30 seconds and uh, when the walk test is completed, the LED on the Safari board will blink uh, several times to indicate that the walk test is over and that the board is armed and ready for action. So I'm going to stop this. Oh, it's actually finished up walk test. You can kind of see the LED flashing there. So now if we activate the board with motion, GoPro is now going to power up as it just did. 
the lighting array came back on. Because the way I have it set up now, it's actually detecting that it's dark enough that it would be nighttime and that we would need the lighting array. So the lighting array comes on about one second before the actual video starts on your GoPro. And uh, I have the board set up in trail mode. So that will give you a one minute video. And your lighting array, of course, is gonna stay on during that whole process. And uh, when that one minute video is completed, then the uh, array will cut off about one second after video has stopped. So I'm going to continue to let that run. We're at uh, 55 seconds now of video. I'm going to get this up here where my, hopefully you can see the timer on your little GoPro. And we're at one minute and five seconds and we're cutting off and the lighting array just cut off. Now if uh, there was further detection, motion detection, right there toward the end of that one minute video, then it would have continued on for another 30 seconds and um, without any interruption. Um, so it would have given, given you a total of about um, a minute and 31 or 32 seconds of uh, video with the uh, array on. Of course, during the daytime, you know, lighting uh, is sensed as being enough for being daytime then that uh, array would not have come on at all now if you were to uh, change dip switch one on the safari board um, to the on position that would give you 30 second video clips and if further motion is detected then it would have given you an additional 30 seconds making it a total of about uh, one minute and one or two seconds of uh, video without any inter interruption. Um, <clears throat> one other thing, I've got uh, HPWA lenses. I'm uh, not sure if you need those, uh, but I've got it in the uh, black housing with the white lens or the camo with the white lens. And uh, if you'd let me know which one of those you prefer, I'm guessing probably the camo one since you have a camo. Uh, case that the bill would go into but if you'll let me know which one of those that you prefer then uh, I'll just send you an uh, invoice or a, or a total through email or uh, everything that you see here and I'll get that shipped out to you thanks